I'm going to introduce Jeanette Okur, who's from the University of Texas at Austin and has been working at on her own set of materials, um, the short version called Merhaba, which is a Turkish textbook. Uh, so Jeanette, tell us, take it away. Um, hi, I'm Jeanette Okur. You can hear me now, right? Yes. And my entire choral team is here, so I want to recognize them. Uh, here we have Carl Blake. Uh, director of Coral, uh, project coordinator is Sarah Sweeney, and uh, Natalie, I can't see you, but I think you're still there. Uh, Natalie, who is our uh, web designer and did all the beautiful graphic design on the textbook. So thanks everybody. Um, so I started this project for all the same reasons as Estra and Ebru. Um, maybe one more. I also found that vocabulary was out of control in uh, Turkish textbooks. And, you know, coming from a non-native speaker perspective, I said, you know, gram uh, not only grammar, but, you know, not only all the things that they said, but also vocabulary has got to be spiraled. It's got to somehow be brought under control um, for the learner who's not immersed in the culture. Um, so, and I've been on this journey a little longer, almost four years now, I think. Um, so, everything starts, uh, begins with a hello, um, is a media rich OER designed to teach Turkish for exactly the same level, <laughs> language and culture for people who are at inter intermediate mid approximately, and when we wanna get them to advanced mid or at least advanced low. And it's meant both for people in classroom settings, but also for people in sem semi-autonomous learning situations, <clears throat> maybe learning with a tutor. There are a lot of people learning Turkish that way as well. Um, the textbook and the public canvas course uh, comprised an openly licensed curriculum. It's a CC by SA license, um, focused on developing intercultural communicative competence. Um, it consists of four kind of long units, <laughs> which invite the learners to engage with culturally, culturally rich print, audio, and video texts, and to use the target language to do the things that, um, that you know, we, all this terminology we know, to investigate, explain, and reflect on the relationship between contemporary Turk sociocultural practices, products, and perspectives, and their own. Um, and each unit contains contextualized grammar lessons, um, and I'm, this is not in any particular order, videos of Turks speaking about their lives in their country, activities that not only hone language skills, but also raise awareness about contemporary Turkish society. Um, and the Canvas course, the public Canvas course is not yet launched, but the textbook is newly launched. Um, the, tech, the Canvas portion of it contains interactive auto-correcting exercises that facilitate learners' acquisition of vocabulary and certain syntax structures. Um, so we're going to be in slides for a little while, but then I'm going to go into the website and try to show a few things. Okay, uh, pedagogical design. Um, I'm actually going to tell some things that are directly in the student guide. Um, number one, it's aligned with the actual standards for intermediate and advanced level communicative skills, mainly advanced, um, but it's kind of a bridge course still. Um, and the intercultural proficiency descriptors, it reflects my commitment and my university's commitment to blended instruction and the flipped classroom model. So a lot of what's being done in this curriculum is being done outside of class and class time is really reserved for interpersonal, um, you know, interpersonal interaction. Um, and it's based on the premise that we should be focusing on uh, learning language as it is used. Um, and so I tried to make all the guided, <laughs> the activities guided by real life plausible language situations. Of course, sometimes you look back and you say, oh, I've fallen into that trap of that not really real life kind of thing. Like some fill in the blank things and always end up being not really real life, but they're still useful. 
Um, let's see. I tell the students in the student guide um, that uh, this is what we're trying to do. Move you from the personal realm of talking about me all the time to the societal realm. Um, we're going to give you lots of practice room. And we're also going to challenge your higher order thinking skills. Um, the book is balanced in terms of the four skills and it's balanced in terms of seriousness and fun. So there's some things in here that would be less appealing to maybe someone, an adult learner who's 50 years old. It does really speak to sort of people in their 20s and 30s. Um, another really important premise is that culture and language are full fundamentally intertwined and that culture is not some separate skill set, uh, but rather the foundation of all language use. Um, you'll see from the anyone who explores the, the book that um, there's no one target culture portrayed in the book. Rather, it shows various communities and subsets, subcultures within Turkey. And there's an assumption that in learning about all these different subcultures, we're also going to be learning about ourselves and challenging our own assumptions of our own culture. Okay. And to that end, I always tell students, look at the objectives at the beginning of the unit before you get started, because you'll notice there's cultural knowledge and mindset objectives in addition to the traditional language and communication objectives. Um, okay, and just for fun, because uh, this sort of shows Natalie's wonderful graphic design, these are just the cover pages of the unit. The first one's about family and family dynamics. The second one's about love and marriage. The third one is about the natural world and social activism, environmentalism. And the fourth one is about the intersection of art and politics. Um, okay, and we will go out of there and into the website. How am I on time? You have someone's keeping time. Uh, yeah, yeah, you have seven minutes left. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Uh, okay, great. If I can share my screen, that would be great. Okay, everybody can see that? Looks the same? <laughs> yeah, it looks the same. All right, this is the website. And from here, uh, you can download the book, you can purchase a $30 copy of it, um, or you can just go into the interactive table of contents. And from here, students should be able to get to different lessons within the book. Everything is arranged. This is the primary like navigation tool. Um, any kinds of like uh, videos or um, audio materials or everything's embedded uh, with the exception of the Canvas course, which is sort of a separate but parallel universe. Um, okay, so here you would click on something and then it would take you to that part in the huge, uh, in that Google Doc. Um, but we will just skip directly. Okay, so I wanna show you a few features. I said that um, it contains activities that hone language skills by ra while raising awareness about contemporary Turkish society. This is just one little example that I like to show. I'm not gonna show you the video, but um, this is a, a pretty well-known um, series on YouTube. This, he's the yellow microphone guy and he goes around and does street interviews um, with people. And in this one, he's interviewing university students, both male and female about whether they wanna get married by dating someone or through I guess you could call it in English an arranged marriage, but it's really like through, you know, sort of a, a, a vetted marriage through family members, right? Um, and, you know, uh, American university students are always shocked when they hear this. You know, they think, oh my God, this still exists, but it does still exist. And so in here, um, you can see that this was, this photograph was published with, with, published with special 
permission. It's a screenshot, but I actually link to the YouTube video because it is copyrighted. Um, so the students listen to about two minutes of this longer video and um, they have to fill in the blanks of the keywords from this conversation. Um, I also got permission to do the transcript. Um, okay, and this is pretty challenging for them. So then they, they would do this at home, they come into class, they talk about it, they figure out what people have said, we work on the hard parts together, and then they have to ask, you know, a, they have to answer a series of interpretive questions about, you know, why do most of the men in this video say that they want to get married by dating? Whereas at least half of the women say they, they prefer an arranged marriage. You know, what's going on here? Uh, what's, you know, underneath the surface of their answers? Why could their perspectives be different? So they argue about that for a while. And then there's this one woman who gets, uh, this one female student who gets um, very emotional uh, during the video. And you get the feeling that she's perhaps come off, coming off a bad relationship. <laughs> so I have the students guess about what might have happened to her. I don't give them any clues. You know, why she answers the way she does. She wants an arranged marriage, most definitely. Um, and then, of course, they debate, if you were asked this question, what would you answer and why? And recently, because I've had a higher percentage of Muslim students in my class who come from traditional families, um, it's been a more interesting debate um, because you see both perspectives. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I said another feature um, were videos. This is the YouTube channel, um, which exists by itself, but the these YouTube self-produced produced YouTube videos are um, actually linked into the book. There's a point in the book where students are asked to, um, of each unit, asked to listen to four or five different videos of people responding to the same interview questions. And the task is then that they um, are going to compare and contrast the content of what those people said and look for trends. And can they, make, can they come to any conclusion about um, you know, cultural trends based on these interviews? And then there's an extension, um, always an extension activity where they then go out and they have to um, do a more extended interview on the same general topic um, with a native speaker and bring their interview results as a um, summary back into class. Um, so these are just some of these videos and I'll just open up one so you can see. This is for example, the five videos that they would listen to different people talking about um, uh, whoops, about uh, their family. Okay. And I wanted to especially show the parts, parts that are not there yet that are gonna be in Canvas. So um, this is where they are right now is, is housed in a software platform that is closed, um, that's only used at UT. Um, and I'm hoping to rebuild this in Canvas practice quizzes in a public course. Um, basically, a lot of these exercises, there's a lot of front loading of vocabulary, sometimes before more difficult reading um, readings. And uh, one the way that I do this is, um, introducing the words through dictation exercises. So for example, here the word for environment would come. Çevre. And here is a sentence. Çevreni nasıl bulmak istiyorsan öyle bırak. And the student has to listen and write down the sentence as best as they can. They can listen as many times as they want. There's also other means of introducing vocabulary, but this is just one that has been really helpful for my students. Um, it also reinforces, you know, new grammar that they're learning as well. Um, but uh, in the Canvas, usually this would be teacher graded. In the public Canvas course, I'll need to put, you know, an answer key um, for people who are working without a teacher. Other types of exercises um, include 
uh, vocabulary where they might be listening and anticipating vocabulary. So this, so this one is in a dialogue and they're, you know, listening for words, they have to apply, you know, certain suffixes, and then they press the button at the bottom after they've filled it all out. They submit their attempt and they can see what they got right, what they got wrong. The really nice feature of this current program is that uh, when they go to reattempt it the second time, all their correct answers are saved and they don't, you know, they only have to go back and redo the ones that got wrong. Um, and here is one final one. It looks the same, but this one is more focused on grammar. Um, speaking of which, I just wanted to show one last thing. Am I still okay on time? Um, you are out of time. Okay, I won't. I was going to show an, a, gram, a contextualized grammar uh, example, but I won't. That's okay. <laughs> well, we, we want to make sure that we will have one minute to, for questions, but then we have to go because we're having a wrap up session for everybody for both rooms. So, any questions? There are no, no, no questions in the chat. Those of us from Coral are pretty familiar with this, so we don't have any questions. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you know, one issue that is a real sticker that I want to make Esther and, <laughs> and Abru aware of now is um, if your center finds accessibility issues important, a lot of your layout is going to have to be redone. <laughs> a lot of my layout and particularly grammar charts have to be redone. Yeah. Um, if I can just show what the color coding looks like in our grammar charts and the reason for it. Um, <clears throat> okay. So you see how things are in like boxes and shading instead of like a lot of mine uh, looked like yours in the very beginning where I had like each suffix was a different color in the word and I thought it was great. Well, unfortunately, I learned that um, that's very difficult for people who are colorblind <laughs> or people who have other issues. Uh, I see. And uh, when you print also, uh, the, uh, you the know, prices the, go up, right? So, so we ended up using many fewer colors and different kinds of um, bolds and italics and different things to make both the digital and the print version more uh, accessible. Thank you so much, Jeanette.